My name is Jordan Reichert, and I am the West Coast Campaign Officer for the Avon Alliance Environment Voters Party of Canada, and I'm the leader of the Victoria Horse Alliance. What might be less obvious is that I'm a cat person advocating for horses who lives with a dog. However, I don't have the luxury or interest of picking which animals I represent. They all matter to me equally. I have never professed to be a professional horse caretaker. However, all the evidence I have provided you with on their care is based on the insights provided to me by professionals. Hence why I'm here before you today to speak about the horse carriages that are inhumanely forced to work on our streets. It is important to see, it is wonderful to see the community talking about the horse carriages as this is an important issue that has not uh, had the attention it deserves. However, it appears that people have forgotten that the conversation is about the evidence of animal cruelty, exploitation, and threats to public safety. This is not about whether people like seeing them, nor whether they bring in tourist dollars. It is about turning a sentient being into a commodity for profit, and then doing a poor job of caring for them on top of that. While various forms of animal exploitation and entertainment continue to be met with public disdain around the world, raising the profile of the innumerable ways we systematically abuse animals in our society, the horse carriages are clung to like a child's toy in Victoria. While these words may sound harsh, take a look at the comment section of any of the posts on this issue and you will find the defense of the industry is riddled with nothing but personal preferences, personal attacks, and simply abhorrent language. I have yet to see a single comment that effectively challenges the proposition that this is animal exploitation, nor have I seen a single statement that effectively rebukes the evidence provided. Instead, there is dismissiveness, arrogance, and anger, all parts of fearing change, and all equally as ugly. The selfishness is truly shameful behavior to witness when this is about the well-being of other animals, not people's personal preference for how Victoria should look and feel. <clears throat> do the responses from the carriage industry itself do any better at addressing the issues head on? No. Instead, they tell a story of much-loved horses back on the farm who receive regular vet care and checkups. A vet is by no means a professional on horses' feet. Farriers are. That is why I ask qualified farriers to give statements on the evidence provided to them. Based on their finding, these professionals recommended a cruelty complaint. The carriage operators don't care about the consequences of this evidence, though. We are told they love them at home, so whatever happens to them while they are put to work is merely incidental. To me, this sounds like an abusive relationship. Think about it. No matter how many accidents there are, no matter how badly the horses are actually cared for, this industry will eternally defend itself as legitimate and good. We are at a crossroads, Victoria, on how people will judge our community for years to come on the progressiveness towards animal ethics. Years ago, the city banned animal performances, yet somehow the horse carriages fell through the cracks. Since this is unquestionably animals being made to perform for profit and receiving inhumane care, the onus is on the city to act to end this contravention of their own bylaw. Sealand is gone, so is the Luxton Rodeo, and both were defended with the same reasoning as the horse carriages. There is no ethical defense of such an industry whose main line of reasoning for its continued existence is that they were, that they used, they were bred for it. Apply this argument to puppy mills, apply this to aquariums, apply this to rodeos, zoos, dog fighting, trophy hunting, or any other type of animal uh, exploitation and abuse, it fails. I have no doubt that if I brought evidence of cruelty to you, but of a business treating dogs or cats in the same manner, they would be shut down tomorrow. Such is the double standard of society's compassion for animals. So instead of considering its effect on tourism, or the city's vanity, and if the evidence of cruelty is not enough, ask yourself what it would take for you to support a ban. If there is nothing, then I fear the horses, whose bodies are manipulated for the fickle interest and profit of others, have no compassion to wait for in Victoria. Thank you.